Welcome back. It's still watching in the game. I still got Ola Duni Bankole with me in the studio. But it's now time to talk basketball, Ola Duni. And um, we we'll have one man that knows uh, what uh, uh, knows the best when it comes to basketball. He understands the court so well. He has been able to familiarize himself, especially with the Basketball Africa League. I've got Rotimi Akindele joining me on in the game today. Thank you so much, Rotimi, and thank you for your patience. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Bankole. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, great to have you, Rotimi. Let's talk about the Rivers Hoopers right now. They clinched a bronze medal. They keep toppling the records, being the first Nigerian team to ever win a game at the Basketball Africa League, being the first Nigerian team to get to the finals, the final playoff of the Basketball Africa League, being the first Nigerian team to ever pick a medal. Great one from the Hoopers, Rivers Hoopers. But they went past Cape Town Tigers of um, South Africa, and it's great to see that they went home with something. Dominant performance from there. 80 to 57 is like they came like a roaring lion from that loss to Al Akli Benghazi. So, what do you make of this performance from the Rivers Hoopers? I mean, it, excuse me, it was huge for the Rivers Hoopers. Uh, credit to all of the players, credit to the team as a whole. They really wanted this one. And um, I mean, one of Ogadaju's uh, um, wish, well, uh, wishes rather. Uh, was to finish on the podium, which he has done now with the team, and that's what uh, we saw in that game. Uh, I mean, due respect, with respect, uh, I do respect rather to Cape Town Tigers. They lost mm. some of their key players. Maybe oh. that's why it looks pretty easy. Uh, talking about the scoreline, 8:57, but not taking anything away from the Upas's dominance in that game. Uh, it was more like we should be playing in the final game, but we narrowly lost out. And now we just have to go with something. And that was the kind of performance we saw. Kelvin Amaya with 25 points on the court. Uh, before then, the morale booster, again, was the fact that the coach of Rivers Rupert, uh, yeah. was named as the best coach of the BAL season. So uh, those are the things that probably spiked the boys mm. and just uh, you know ensured that they went all the way in that game against Cape Town Tigers just to ensure that they finished on the podium. And if you look at the way Upers have done season four of the BAL, They've recruited so well. Mm. Uh, they got a fantastic manager in terms of the general manager uh, who was able to identify and take quick decisions that has actually translated into this success for River Super. So mm. um, I think overall, the campaign, the project, you can say it's a success for River Supers. And um, let's just see how they can continue, or con I mean, build up from here and continue with the success story. Okay. And maybe we've also set a standard for any other Nigerian side who will probably emerge champions of the league mm. and maybe would want to go to the BAL. This is what you can do, right? And this is how you can get to finish on the podium. All right, um, the Rivers Hoopers, this, this is the second appearance at the Basketball Africa League, having yeah. previously struggled in the group stage in the first edition. How impressed are you? Because the truth is, you just, just talked about them, you know, having to sign new players, uh, prepare so well, get to the competition ahead of time, away from um, the other one where they got to the competition a day before their first game. How impressed are you generally for the organization and the support they got from home going into the Basketball Africa League? I mean, you can, you can um, excuse them in the first edition. The first yeah. edition came right after uh, the COVID, uh, yes. what, what do you call it now? reopening after COVID. So yeah. it was meant to happen in 2020, mm -hmm. but happened in 2021. There were loads of factors then because people were just opening up and then you had all these restrictions. You had um, teams who couldn't even train together. Everybody just had about a few days to put something together. Uh, they were in a bubble. You, you understand? It wasn't like we were playing any league matches in Nigeria mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. then. So we, we just had to present a team because Nigeria is one of the biggest teams in basketball on the continent. And yeah. we got that um, honor. And we, of course, we were asked to present a team. And of course, since then, in terms of seedings for the BAL, Nigeria will always get a direct representation. So that, that was our Upas. I went to that first edition. And you could tell just because we were not doing anything on the home front, anything worthy, anything worthwhile, mm. they struggled in that one. Um, managed to win one game. Yeah, they didn't. It wasn't the. It wasn't the total loss. They managed to win just one game in 2021, and that was it. In 2022, because of our political drama in basketball, mm. uh, we didn't even present a team at the BAL. And then when we tried to correct um, some of our shenanigans, mm. we were able to present another team last season. Far apart, we didn't do very well just because of a whole lot of um, things.
things, a whole lot of factors. Mm -hmm. Now, what Upas have done going into this second season for them was that they were able to identify those factors yeah. that affected them in the first season, yeah. that affected us from totally missing out in the second season, mm -hmm. that affected Quara Parkers in the third season, especially when it comes to recruitment. Yeah. So what they did was identify uh, the coach, by the way, uh, was part of the first edition as well. So he's been there. He, I mean, he understood, he understand the African terrain mm. and then knew that, okay, I probably will have to have this and this addition mm. to make us compete. Don't forget the idea going into BAL4 was just to compete. Qualify mm. as maybe one of the best losers from the Sahara Conference because it was a tough conference. And then let's see what we can get. We just want to get to Kigali. And because of the um, the power play they put up in, in, in Senegal, mm. they were able to finish top of that conference. And then got to Kigali, still finished on the podium. So if you want to rate that um, growth from River Super, like I said, I mentioned the coach, I mentioned the GM, if you're mm -hmm. Zaka, mm -hmm. uh, the support they got from their government as well. Don't forget, this is a state-owned team. Yes. So you can't rule out the support uh, they got from the And he was State able government. to fulfill his promise even before uh, this competition started. It's great. Yeah, exactly. That's for that's for even winning the basketball league yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. And then they, they still got more. They, they, they'll probably still get more. Uh, they got support from their government, uh, the commissioner for sports, and every other person. So it just goes to show that if you have all those temp, if you have that template mm. with all the right support, you can do things well, mm. or we can actually get things done well. But how well do we want to capitalize on this success? That's what I can't seem to answer because I'm not a, an NDBF member. <laughs> Thank you so much. Time on our friend. But to me, I would have um, continued this conversation, like dragged this conversation, but we still have uh, more to talk about in the world of sports. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on In The Game today. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, have a lovely day. Um, Oladuni, great um, one coming from Rotimi there, saying good things about Rivers Hoopers. Yes, they deserve the flowers because they put in a lot of work going into this Basketball Africa League, and we could see the dividend with a bronze medal, Oladuni. Absolutely. It's um, something that um, they did something that a lot of Nigerian teams, um, especially when it comes to football and I cannot wait. Um, the MBBF should be able to make the national team, yeah. create yeah, the national team from it's, these players. It's, it's I cannot wait. and growth. You know, even after the field in the first edition, you know, mm. keeping the coach, um, keeping a couple of the players and um, focusing on recruitment. Mm. I've, always, I've always, you know, emphasized that our success um, on the field, mm. um, on the courts or on the pitch, whatever it is, can only be achieved through our, our success on the environmental factors. All right. The factors that Rutimi um, talked about that affected the Quara Falcons, mm -hmm. that also affected um, the River Zoopers um, on the first edition. So I think um, if we get things right outside the courts, would we have the talents to execute things on the court? So it's, it shouldn't be a problem. We should just ensure that oh, the wow. proper framework, the proper support, you know, is handed to these guys. And uh, I'm sure, you know, medals would follow. Um, we've of got, course, we've medals should follow. Hopefully, when you put in a lot of work, you yes. see the... David, then, you will absolutely. see the rewards. Absolutely. Let, absolutely. Let's, let's move away from basketball a bit because of time. Um, Duni, I beg your pardon. Let's go to football or on the domestic scene, the Nigerian Premier Football League. Yeah, from the statistics coming up, can say that 25 away wins out of 330 games have been made in this season for the 2023-2024 season. We heard the League of Chairmen saying that he would take no... Uh, you know, like a basic attitude going into um, this remaining remainder of the games, sort of running for the title. But big games to expect for today in the Nigeria Premier Football League. I have got Robert Olimena right now, an MPFL expert, joining us in this conversation. So, Robert, thank you for joining Oladuni and I. Uh, good afternoon to you. It's good to be on the program. <laughs> It's great to have you, Robert. I know that I've got bills to pay for the fact that I've kept you so long. But don't worry, I'm able, I'm capable, <laughs> I'll settle those bills. <laughs> but let's talk about the big games for the weekend. Aimba and Rivers United. How much of an impact would this make in the game, especially for the title run? Aimba defending their championship also, considering that Tam Rangers are going away from home to play sport in Lagos. And Ramos Stairs are welcoming Kano Peelers. How much of um, this encounter, how will it you know, impact the title run? <laughs> uh, well, let, let me start with, um, uh, let me start with Remo Stars first and foremost. Okay. Uh, for Remo Stars, uh, they play host to Kano Pillars, that is today. And um, that match is a very, very important one for Remo Stars. Uh, why is it so important? It is important because for Remo Stars, in five meetings mm -hmm. against Kano Pillars 
have not defeated uh, pillars. In fact, in 2022, pillars defeated Remo Stars in Ikene by three goals to one, then under uh, the um, uh, uh, leadership of Agbinga Gubote. So this is more or less uh, one uh, door that, that more or less has a very, very dark memories for them. And right now, they are third on the log behind Aimba on goal difference. And uh, this match is one match that if they can get it, they definitely will go back to second position. And of mm. course, a couple of points that is uh, behind Rangers. Mm. So it is pivotal for them to win. And of course, power the pressure on uh, Rangers who play Sporting Lagos tomorrow. Mm. And of course, from there, let me talk about uh, the Rangers Sporting Lagos game before I talk about Aimba Rivers United game, uh, because both games are set to be played tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, for Sporting Lagos, they are more or less fighting for their lives. Uh, because uh, right now they have 41 points on the log and they are more or less flattened with uh, the relegation zone. So uh, if they can get this point, uh, they more or less go as far as 11th, 12th on the log. Uh, that is uh, depending on what other teams in that same position place tomorrow. So that is Pala United and a host of other teams, including Aqua United as well. So uh, for Sporting Lagos, they will probably not be able to do or will not be willing to do um, Rangers. That is a favor because uh, the rest of uh, the roster will be looking to Spot and Lagos to do them that favor tomorrow, especially in and of course, Remo Stars. Mm. For Spot and Lagos, the game against Rangers is the fourth game uh, for Coach Abdullahi Bifo. Mm. He has played three games so far, one victory and two defeats. Those victories came at home. That is at uh, the Mobile Justin Arena. And of course, that match was against um, Akpa United, four goals to two. And he has lost two games away. So uh, for Sporting Lagos, uh, I think they'll be more or less looking out for their own good and, of course, uh, trying to keep their um, MPFL status that is going into next um, season. So tomorrow's game is very, very important, not just for Sporting Lagos, but for also Rangers, who, if possible, might want to get um, a point away from home or three points. But I think it's going to make for an interesting uh, scenario and, of course, some atmosphere right there at the Mobile Justice Justin Arena. And I will switch to the question you asked me, Rangers against Rivers United. For Rangers, uh, well, I, I will not say they're out of the title race yet uh, because uh, they've lost uh, Fenedi George to the national team job. They've lost uh, Coach Yema uh, right now, who is out of the country. You know where I will keep the specifics to myself uh, because of um, a couple of... We know. Uh, we know he's in Scotland. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, we know. Uh, for for Ingeba, they, they they have... They have their work cut out for them. Uh, that is um, against uh, Rivers United. For Rivers United, they found joy at home uh, for one defeat of Sporting Lagos last time out. That was last weekend precisely. So they will be looking to see if they can more or less improve their lot on the road. We saw what happened to them during the five hour standing games they had. Yes. Uh, that was um, uh, when the NPFL was on a three weeks break and mm -hmm. uh, they really did not get so much joy on the road. They only got one point and that was uh, against um, uh, Kuala United in the lorry. All other games they played away from home, they were beaten blue black. So um, for Aimba, they will more or less want to continue that run against uh, Rivers United and of course try and also boost their own outside chances of getting their hands on the MPFL title. So I, I think this weekend will more or less have us at the edges of our seats, as well as um, also uh, give us the kind of drama we probably uh, uh, will get to enjoy as we more or less look to the running uh, for the MPFL title at the end of the season. All right, um, Robert, you've been able to do justice to a runner off um, everything to expect in the MPFL for this weekend. Tanner, our friend, I would have dragged you, Robert, but oh, the Lord of creation <laughs> saved you today. So all I did name was let Robert go at this time. Thank you so much for, you know, having to preview the games for the NPSL so as it returns to action.